Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another screencast for Earth Science uh, within the meteorology unit. Last time we met we were discussing or talking about how differences in air pressure created and a little bit prior to that we were looking at humidity or the amount of moisture available in the air as different variables that affect our weather or are concerned with our weather. Today we're going to be going into wind. Wind is very closely associated with our air pressure systems. Winds, or the primary cause of winds, is due to the unequal heating of Earth's atmosphere, basically causing hot air to rise and cold air to sink. What causes this unequal heating? There are a number of different things. If you remember from when we were discussing land and sea breezes, it had to do with the specific heat of water. Here are global wind patterns. So it's a little bit different, but still along the same lines. What we see here is we have our sun, and the sun's rays are going to come in pretty much parallel into an area. But places at the equator, such as here, are going to receive this more intense energy or insulation from the sun. So because it's more intense, these temperatures are going to be hotter. Versus a place like us, right here at higher latitudes, when the sun's energy strikes here, it strikes a bigger area, so it's less intense. So it ends up actually being a little bit cooler, more direct, hotter, less direct, less intense is going to be cooler. Well, what happens to air that is warm or cool? Remember, warm air is less dense. Cool air is more dense. So what ends up happening is we get a difference in density. And the difference in density is going to lead a, into a difference of pressure, a difference in air pressure. What happens is we have a horizontal of air, create uh, a movement of horizontal air created from the differences in pressure of the air. The winds or the air moves from high pressure to low pressure. So you can see here, we go from high pressure to low pressure. Winds are also always named from where they come from. So wind coming from the east is known as an east wind. Wind coming from the north is known as a north wind. And you can see here from this little diagram, we have our high pressure here and our low pressure over here. These right here, remember, these are called isobars. Lines of equal air pressure. and our winds go through from high to low. Notice the wind is perpendicular to the isobars. Also, remember we had two acronyms that we used for high pressure and low pressure. High or HOC is high outward and clockwise. So we have that outward movement of air going towards our low. Low pressure, inward, counter, clockwise. So our low pressure is going in. Okay, here again, we see our high and low pressure so our winds, they go perpendicular to the isobars. High pressure, the air moves outwards and clockwise. Low pressure is gonna move inwards and counterclockwise. So the result in what we get is this wind that's generated from high pressure to low pressure. If we look at a balloon that's in the air, it will have a net movement or have a tendency to move in one direction based on those winds. So we have a high pressure over here, a low pressure over here, and the balloon will ultimately move from high pressure to low pressure or in that direction. This is our wind. These wind patterns will be affected due to Earth's rotation. When they're affected by Earth's rotation, this is known as Coriolis. Coriolis effect is due to 
Earth's rotation. So as Earth rotates, it causes, an, it causes an apparent deflection of the wind to the right in the northern hemisphere. North hemisphere. There is a deflection or bend in the wind to the right. In the southern hemisphere, it's to the left. So you can see here from the equator, a wind moving out would have this apparent motion to the right. We can see that a little bit better here on this diagram. So this is showing just general wind patterns due to Coriolis. And you can see here, as the winds move out, bend going to the right. Also, as they move down towards, this is also a bend into the right. If we start here, it moves this way to the right, and that's to the right. And this is even better. This is on our reference table, page 14, right here. And we can see here that we have our equator and our high pressure and low pressure systems. Low pressure here, high pressure here. And I know this because where it's wet. Remember, moist air is going to have low pressure. The, also, the sun's direct rays hit here, so it's a little bit warmer. High pressure at areas where it's going to be dry. But the resultant winds are deflecting to the right. And here, we have another low pressure up on top. These winds deflecting to the right. So we can use our reference table to help us with the Coriolis effect to see how these winds are deflecting. And here's a couple of questions based on the reference table, page 14, concerning air pressure. You can go through these, and we'll probably end up going over some of these in class. Um, if not, you could definitely come to extra help and check these out too. But they're pretty easy questions um, when you're using the reference table here. So you can see these. And another set right here, looking at high and low pressure systems and how the winds would be moving as a result of them. That's it. Winds is not very tough. Just need to remember they go from high to low. And also remember our acronyms for high and low pressure systems. They'll help you remember where the winds. One of the key things to remember about winds also is that winds are named from where they come from. We'll practice more of that when we come do it, uh, especially using synoptic weather maps. But that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this little talk on winds, and I will see you another day. Take care. Goodbye.